thanks for joining me on my Marco Report. My name is Mike, and the Marco Report is on mortgage rates. We get into explaining, giving explanations of what's driving mortgage rates on any given day. Uh, we get into uh, sharing information from the economic calendar, headline news, uh, geopolitical items that could be impacting it. Uh, sometimes uh, it's the market sentiment changes. Sometimes good news is now bad news, and you don't know what's going on. So we're here to try to give explanations of what's going on and what, what to look for uh, when mortgage rates are, uh, especially in volatile situations, we're here to try to assist you guys here. A little bit about myself is I'm a loan officer. I do uh, work with the National Lender. We're here to work. We do loans in all 50 states. So if you guys are looking to refinance a purchase and uh, want some assistance, reach out. We're here to help you guys. Uh, but more than that, we want to be your resource to answer any questions you guys might have, whether it might be uh, examples could be uh, about mortgage programs available out there or maybe even about mortgage rates itself as like this uh, video. Um, however, we'll, uh, we'll get started uh, with the, the video here now. So uh, today is a big day. Uh, this week's been real light in terms of economic calendar. Uh, today, however, we got basically two things. Uh, the first one is the the inflation data and the second one is initial jobless claims that we get every week, every Thursday. But uh, the big one is the CPI uh, number came in. Uh, we'll start off, with, it's kind of mixed here, but we'll start off with the, uh, the headline number here, the consumer price index for the month of February. So in January, it went up 0.6% month over month and forecast has gone for 0.8% for February and it came in expected. Now it's year over year, came in, jumped up from 7.5% to forecast 7.9, also coming in at, um, at forecast at 7.9%. So nearly 8% now we're at uh, inflation, which of course we're all seeing this uh, everywhere. Uh, we're seeing this from our groceries to our gasoline to uh, our energy, our you know, everything we're seeing this across the board here. Now when you strip out those uh, food and energy, uh, because those are two variables that uh, we cannot control, uh, this is what they, they get the core. This is really what the Fed will look at. Uh, this isn't the Fed's favorite gauge for inflation. It's the PCE, but they do uh, obviously look at this. and The rest of us look at this as well because it is consumer-oriented here. Now, the core is uh, month over month went from 0.6% in January to a forecast of half a percent, and it came in expectations as well. It's uh, year over year jumped from 6% all the way to 6.4%. So that was a pretty big jump there in one month, uh, from especially on an annual basis here. Now, we also have the jobless claims. Uh, last week was revised slightly higher from 215 to 216,000 people. Forecast to come for 217,000. They exceed that. So we have more people laid out than expected at 227,000, or at least applying for un unemployment uh, than expected. Now, as, as you look here, the continuing claims also uh, increase. So that's at a revision from 1.476 uh, million to 1.469 and uh, forecast uh, you know it was supposed to dip down to 1.46 however it went upwards uh, to 1.494 now earlier uh, before the uh, markets even opened uh, the ECB had their meeting and gave their statement and uh, the markets reacted negatively uh, towards it so basically what they did was that they yes they left their rate unchanged, but like the U.S., uh, our Fed, they decided they're going to go ahead and speed up their quantum of easing, meaning that they're going to quickly uh, finish that up And uh, due to the war and higher inflation uh, that's running rampant. Uh, they're going to go ahead and do like what we're doing. Our, our Fed is, should be wrapping up their uh, the purchases uh, this month, so that quantum of easing should be wrapped up, and then they're going to do the same thing uh, over there in the markets, of course, uh, reacting towards that in a negative fashion, kind of like they did with the Fed here. And it's even affecting our markets as well, even though it's European. Now, earlier today, uh, a few moments ago, about almost an hour ago, uh, we had the 30-year bond. The 30-year bond was uh, a very successful. Actually, it was quite well. So we, uh, if you look at the bond market here, uh, we dropped quite a bit lower. And this was uh, off from earlier as well. So we even had some lenders repriced for the worse already so far this morning. But this bond auction may have uh, put a cap at it. So we may not see at the lows here in terms of mortgage-backed security. So that may, they may put the uh, the pencil in the sand type of thing where you're probably not going to see it cross that today. 
Uh, it may improve a little bit, uh, but I don't think you're going to see it worsen. I think we're at the lows we're going to see it today. So, again, uh, it's another day where rates have risen as a result. Uh, we're up, uh, it's almost a half a point uh, at 0.4, you know, 41 basis points. So, this is what kind of price we're kind of looking at right now. And here's the, uh, here's what it looks like today. So, one, it went up slightly, and then it came worsen, and it's kind of steadily worsened a little bit. Over this last little bit, uh, it's kind of starting to improve a little bit right around, like I said, around the 10 o'clock. 30 we're starting to see some sideways movement here for the most part we're kind of going the sideways movement since that 10 o'clock uh, pattern here so uh, again uh, the biggest thing right now that's uh, skittering uh, that's killing us right now in terms of interest rates is talk about inflation so inflation if you're not aware is the enemy for bonds and that's what uh, mortgage-backed securities are they are bonds and because if they're spread over 30 years, you have uh, it, inflation erodes that value over that course. So it's the enemy of bonds here. Uh, that's why you're kind of seeing react in negative time periods. So when we have high inflation, so when the Fed actually raises rates, uh, the short-term rates, that's fighting inflation. So sometimes we actually get the opposite reaction. Most people think mortgage rates can go up, but sometimes we actually have a slight improvement uh, due to the fact that the Fed's fighting inflation here. So stay prepared. We'll be having that meeting, I believe, next week. is around the 16th, I believe it was. They're going to have their uh, FOMC next week. Uh, here's also a look at the 10-year Treasury. We did work our way back up this whole week. Uh, we've been going upwards again, and now we hit back that 2% uh, mark here. Uh, we're off from the higher. We're up slightly higher, but we pulled back a little bit. But we're still at the 2% level here uh, on 10-year yields. Last but not least, we will touch on the... Uh, Average rate for conforming limits that got, well, these do have, uh, again, uh, points built into them. And the 30 year is now up to 4.28. And, excuse me, and the 15 year is up to a 3.53 now. So, again, these are, uh, we're, we're, still, we're seeing rates climb again. And, uh, you know, for the most part, we could still see them continue to rise, especially when we have uh, concerns about inflation uh, as a result as well. All right, folks, uh, if you guys get questions, again, please reach out to us. We're here to help you guys out. If you guys like these videos, please help us out. We greatly appreciate it, and we do appreciate you guys. Uh, if you guys can smash that like button and uh, share our videos and subscribe. Otherwise, we'll look forward to seeing you guys in tomorrow's videos. You guys have a great, wonderful day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.